Hi everyone, welcome back to Pete's Garage. Well today we're going to troubleshoot an ignition problem and we're going to talk about microprocessor or electronic controlled spark boxes, MSD boxes, which stands for multi-spark discharge. Alright, so here's the backstory. I was running the Cobra, I was trying to do some tuning work, I shut it off and I went to start it and wouldn't start back up. So we're going to go and do some troubleshooting and ignition systems, see if we can figure out what's wrong. Now, I want to share with you some troubleshooting things you can do that apply to all cars. This particular car has the Excel Gen 7 EFI system in it, which means it has the Excel EFI computer. Uh, has the Excel 6A microprocessor computer spark module and the Excel Wideband O2 sensor. We're going to troubleshoot the ignition system, see if we can figure out what's wrong. And even though I'm doing this on a uh, fuel injected car, I want to show you some troubleshooting things you can do on any car. Now, the first thing any vehicle needs to run is three things it needs air, it needs fuel, and it needs a spark. So let's troubleshoot those, see if we can figure out what's wrong. Okay, first things first is air. I have tons of air. There are no restrictions. The air cleaner is off. I have no problem with air. Air is getting in. Let's check the fuel. Now I can turn on ignition, make sure I have fuel pressure. All right, we got fuel pressure. Now all I have to do is check for spark. And I'm going to use this device right here. This goes right in the line with the spark plug wire right to the spark plug. You put your spark plug boot on here and you plug this on your spark plug and if you're getting spark this will light up. Now these are pretty cheap. You can go to Harbor Freight. The one with the 90 degree boot is like seven bucks or you can get one with a straight boot for like five bucks. Great thing to have when you're troubleshooting ignition problems and you want to see if you're getting sparked your plug. Instead of pulling out the plug trying to ground it and run it. So let's try this out. Now all I'm going to do is pull off a spark plug wire like that. I'll plug one end into the wire and the other end back onto the plug. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the engine over. I'm going to turn this light off so we don't have, so we can see. And if I'm getting spark, this should light up. Okay, now that didn't light up, so I'm not getting spark to my plug. Now, so I know I'm not getting spark, I'm just going to disconnect this, take this out, and hook up my spark plug. Just put it back together. Okay. Now, since I'm not getting any spark, I'm going to check my coil with a voltmeter. And it's pretty easy to check because a coil is simply just a wire wound in a coil around a center core that takes the 12 volts from your battery and steps it up to like 30,000 volts so the spark can jump across the spark plug and ignite the fuel. So let's check our coil. If the coil is good, meaning that if the coil is not broken, I'll have continuity from one side to the other. If I test the coil and I don't get any uh, continuity, that means the coil is open and the coil is either burnt out or the wire is broken on the inside. Testing a coil is pretty simple. First, take off your coil wire. And I'm, I have to take off this connector because the terminals are inside the connector. But if you have a regular coil, the positive and negative will be on the outside. Now, I have my voltmeter. Put the screwdriver on. I have my voltmeter here. And I'm going to set this on resistance. So I'm looking for continuity. And what that means is, if I have it on continuity, and if I take... This is kind of tough to do. If I take my positive and negative leads to my coil, or I'm sorry, to my voltmeter, and when I touch them together, you can see the meter goes up. That means I have a solid connection. And what I'm looking for is to make sure when I touch this to my coil that the, the um, meter goes up. If the meter doesn't go up, that means the coil is broken or something inside the coil is broken. So. I will put this on the positive side, on the black on the negative side, and I'll touch this and we'll see if my coil is good. Okay, ready? We're going to check. And there we go. The needle moves and my coil is good, which means I'll do it one more time so you can see. I have continuity, 
which means my coil is good. So the coil is not broken on the inside. It's fine. Now the next thing is to make sure you have 12 volts coming into your coil. When you check it, make sure you take the positive and negative off your coil or else you'll be checking continuity through the battery. So you take your leads off your coil, you check it, and it's fine. Next, take the wires coming from your battery and make sure you have 12 volts coming here. But since this is fuel injected, there won't be 12 volts coming here because it's controlled by a microprocessor. So I'm going to go and pull out the processor and go take a look at that and see if there's an error code. I'm going to go look at that inside the uh, passenger compartment where it's mounted. Now this is going to be a pretty easy one to solve. I opened up the dashboard, I looked at, at the spark control module that was under the dash. The fuse was not blown, it's only a 10 amp fuse, but as soon as I took the dashboard off, I could smell that burnt electronic smell. So I'm going to open this up, take a quick look inside, and see if anything's wrong. Alright, so let's take this thing apart, pretty simple. There's only eight screws in here. Now this is, this is an MSD box. They're all MSD boxes. And that just stands for multi-spark discharge, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Pretty simple. This is the light LED on the end that tells you there's a trouble code. And it indicated there was a trouble code there. You got a selector switch for how many cylinders and the mode you're using. Now, I took this out, and it's pretty simple. They're all, they're all pretty much the same. You have a wire that goes to your tachometer. You have a, a ground and a plus that gets hooked up to the battery side. This gets hooked up to a different, uh, if you have an a inductive type ignition uh, system like a, a, a sensor on your, on your uh, uh, crankshaft for rotation. You have a positive and negative that goes to the coil with a ground. And this is a switched 12 volt source. And this is a trigger. This is what the computer triggers this box with. Pretty simple. So let's finish taking the power. Now, this stands for multi-spark discharge, and instead of the inductive type ignition like you have in a regular car, this has capacitive ignition. And when you open this up, these things right here are capacitors. This is a capacitor. It's usually an electrolyte filled component, and this stores electricity. And what these do is, 12 volt comes in here, fills these up with voltage, and this steps up voltage to the coil, and we'll talk about that, why this is beneficial. But we're just going to take this out, and take, take a look at the bottom, and there you go. Okay, the board is all burnt up. See how it's all burnt up? Something fried in here, and um, I'm not going to bore you with the details of it, but it looks like potentially... Um, see there's a chip in there, there's a chip in there that melted. So there might be a voltage control chip right there that melted that probably caused overload of the circuit and it burnt out the entire board. So this thing is fried, got to be replaced. Now always remember safety first. Whenever you're working with an ignition system, you're, de you're dealing with two parts of the ignition system. There's the primary ignition, which is the 12 volts or the voltage coming up to the coil. Then there's the secondary ignition. That's the part of the ignition where it goes from the coil to the spark plug and what's the difference? Well, in a standard coil system, you have 12 volts coming up to the coil and as that power, the, the 12 volts goes through that coil, depending on how many uh, wraps there are in a coil, there's a process called induction and it takes that 12 volts and it steps it up to about 15,000 volts, sends it through the coil wire, the, the coil wire to the distributor, and when the rotor comes around and touches that particular spark plug, the current goes through, it jumps across the spark plug gap, and that's what causes the ignition. So you have your primary voltage of 12, secondary voltage of roughly 15,000, and it's if you have to make sure you discharge the coil, which is just simply shorting out from the, the coil to a ground just to take that power out of it in case you have 12 volts there. If you've ever gotten zapped with that 15,000 volts, you know what it feels like. I accidentally got zapped with that once, and let me tell you, it laid me out of my ass. My shoulder was hurting me for a week. My whole body hurt. 15,000 volts going through your body could kill you, and it really hurt for a week. I was sore. Now, that doesn't mean that this is any safer because here's the difference and this is why you use an MSD box or multi-spark discharge box. 
this one, this will do a few things for you. First about the safety. When you're working with this, these are the capacitors, okay? These are capacitors in there, and they look pretty innocent, right? They're really small. But what this does, these capacitors are like mini, uh, let's call them storage cells. It takes 12 volts here, and these capacitors will take that 12 volts, store it up, and when told to release, can release up to 500 volts, or over 500 volts. So right now, if I put 12 volts to this box, and these were charged, and I touch that to my finger, I can get zapped with, with about uh, 500 volts. So you got to work safe. Don't play around with these things, because they're dangerous. Capacitors are dangerous things to work with. Any part of the ignition is dangerous, so be careful when you're working it. Safety first. Now what this does... Capacitive discharge means the power comes into these the capacitors, capacitance discharge, stores up the power, and instead of feeding 12 volts to your coil, the capacitors feed over 500 volts to your coil. It slams the current in there, and instead of having a 15,000 volt spark across your spark plug, you could have 30, 35, 40,000 volts across your spark across your spark plug. That means your spark is hotter, okay? You're getting a hotter spark to ignite the fuel, okay? Not only that, the capacitive type discharge can fire up to 3,000 times for every rotation of the crankshaft. And for the 20 degrees, while the rotor is coming around and coming across your uh, rotor cap and sending spark to the spark plug, this can fire multiple times, multi-spark discharge. That's what this thing does, so it can fire many times when asked. So instead of getting one spark, you get a bunch of sparks. This is what it looks like when you have a single spark discharge, and this is what it looks like when you have a multi-spark discharge. So the benefits of an MSD, or multi-spark discharge system, is that at low RPM, you'll get a more consistent spark, so it'll run better, and at high RPM, you don't run the risk of skipping, or the coil running out of power, or you don't run out of uh, uh, voltage going to the coil, so it can't keep up. The capacitive discharge allows that coil to have current faster, hotter, and burn more consistent throughout the entire RPM range. Over, I think it's, uh, depending on your, the, the system you buy, over 3500 RPM, it's going to switch modes. So under 3500 RPM, it's going to give you more consistent performance. Now, I'm going to be replacing that box. It was a 6A box. There are many different kinds of boxes, so you'll have to research which one is right for your application. But this is just a standard 6A, just standard replacement for any type of uh, EFI system. Let's take a look at it. All right, these boxes are pretty simple. And there's not much to them really. It's going to come with a bunch of wires, wiring harness connections, uh, connectors, and then you got some grommets, screws. Put that together. But these things are really fairly simple. And these are the wires. You have a, let me show you this real quick. Okay. First, we'll start here. This purple wire goes to magnetic pickup if you have a magnetic pickup on your um, ignition system. The gray wire here, get this out of here. This gray wire, gray wire goes to the tachometer, tachometer for the gray wire. The white wire is a trigger. So whatever's going to trigger your box, whether it's coming from your distributor points, whatever this is. In my case, go to, this goes to the computer trigger, and we have a red wire here. This thinner red wire goes a, to the a switched ignition switched power source. The big black and red wires. This just goes to a ground. This one goes to a ground. This one goes right to the positive side of the battery. You can usually hook it to the uh, positive side of the starter relay. And then this goes to the coil. You have a red and black, goes to the coil. Pretty simple. It comes with an extension cable if you have to go to your magnetic pickup. So I'm just going to go and install this. All right, my new spark box is installed. Let's see if it starts up. Okay, great, it started up. That means the ignition module was my problem. However, 
The original tune was set to 1100 RPMs at idle. Right now it's idling at 2000. And I suspect the difference is because the new box, first of all, it's newer, many years newer. So the electronics are probably a little faster and it's sending a hotter spark, which is changing the tune of my computer. Now this is the Excel Gen 7 computer system and I'm going to walk through the steps real quick on how you change your offset timing of your crankshaft to match the actual timing of your engine. This is critical to do and once I do that the RPM should lower back down to 1100. Here's the dashboard for the Excel Gen 7 DFI system. First thing I have to do is I have to force my timing. I'm going to set my force timing to 20 degrees. Now you can see timing is forced at 20 degrees and I want to find out what my initial offset was for my crankshaft. So I'm going to go into my setup menu here and my initial offset is 7 degrees. So it's a 7 degree offset. I'm going to start it up and find out where the timing is now forced at 20 degrees. Okay, after running it, the timing was forced at 20, but I actually timed it at 34, which means it's 14 degrees off. I have to take half of that off or 7 degrees. So I'm going to go back into my system setup I'm going to reduce this down to zero because this was seven, now it's zero. And I suspect again it's because of timing, new box, the uh, new ignition box is faster. And I can send this all to the ECM. And now I can restart it and make sure my timing is at 20. Now that my timing is set correctly and I have my crank offset at zero degrees, I know that the computer is timed. I can come in here and turn off my force timing, start it up, and we'll see how it idles. So troubleshooting an ignition problem is really not that difficult. If you do have to replace any component in your ignition system, whether it's the coil, your distributor, whatever it is, if you have an older car, points, condenser, resistor, ballast resistor, whatever it is, it's always good to check the timing and check the performance after you change the components because there's variation in parts and something is going to change. If you have the Excel Gen 7 ignition system and you're having trouble with it, if you have any questions, I'll try and help you. But those are the basic processes and how you retune your, uh, the base timing for the engine to the module with your spark control module. That's how you go through it. Just remember if you're going to send stuff to the ECM, you got to turn the ignition off or turn the power off and cycle it back on. That way the, the information you sent to the computer gets stored in the RAM and when you start it back up you'll have that setting. Just go back and forth and it's fine. I hope that helps you out. I hope you can uh, get some basic tools, simple tools, solve your own ignition problems, fix them yourself because they're really not that complicated. Just be careful. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.